All right. Good evening, folks. It's six o'clock. I'll call the 14th regular Common Council meeting to order. Will the clerk state the quote of the evening? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Thank you. Will the clerk call the roll? Uh, Alderperson Bellinger. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Lefebvre. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Perella. Excuse? Alderperson Here. Peterson. Here. I lost Alderperson it Raby. Raby? Yes. Here. Thank you. Alderperson Rust. Excused. There are eight present. Thank you. If folks could stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Alder Decker, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from the 13th regular council meeting held on October 7th, 2024. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor of approving the minutes, state aye. 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 Any objection? Minutes are approved. Next, City Attorney, item four, mayoral confirmations. Uh, there is uh, one, uh, the mayor hereby submits the following appointment for your confirmation. Sarah Stemper, to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission. Thank you, Alder Decker. I move to confirm. Second. Moved and seconded. This is a roll call vote. Lost him again. Alder Feldy, aye or nay? Alder Feldy, can you hear me? Seven eyes. All right, that's approved. Next, we have a presentation from Baker Tilly. Uh, Michelle Walter is here. So Michelle, would you like to come on up and take it away? Perfect. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Walter. I am a senior manager from Baker Tilly, and we work um, with the city to prepare the annual audit of the financial statements as well as the single audit on the federal and state awards. So we're going to go very high level over the 2023 audit and the results of that audit. But overall, you hire us, your auditors, to provide an opinion on your financial statements as well as your compliance with federal and state grants. And so one of the, the first report we issue an opinion on is the financial statements. And for 2023, we were able to issue what is called an unmodified opinion. So this is the highest level of assurance you can get from your auditors. This means that the financial statements are free of material misstatement that they include all the required disclosures that are necessary, and that they are consistent and true with what they need to be. Um, these are included on pages one to three of your financial statements this year, in case you wanted to take a look. But there is also this matter of emphasis paragraph that is in this opinion, and this is called out for two reasons this year. The first is that there was an implementation of a new accounting standard, and this is really related to recording subscriptions as a liability on the balance sheet. So project that the government accounting standards were put into place, that is now in your financial statements. Didn't change any operations of the city, but just a disclosure and reporting. The second item that is included under your emphasis of matter paragraph is due to a restatement of 2022 numbers. And this was due to a amount of about $1.6 million that was not recorded in the water utility in 2022, but through the single audit in 2022, we identified it and corrected it this year. We're gonna dive into the high level details of those numbers in just a minute, but there is another report that we issue as part of the audit. This is called the Reporting and Insights Document. And this summarizes the audit from beginning to end. So it essentially lays out the responsibilities of us, your auditor, as well as the responsibilities of management 
um, the risks that are associated with it, as well as kind of the audit approach taken. In here, we also communicate any internal control matters, such as significant deficiencies or material weaknesses. There have, are a couple material weaknesses identified in the city's 2023 report. Um, I'm, none of them are new, essentially, for 2023. Um, they are repeat findings that revolve around some segregation of duties between an individual who prepares something and then reviews it, as well as reconciliations throughout the year with documented approval. Um, there's also a material weakness for the financial statement close process, and this is very common for municipalities. So this is that your auditors prepare financial statements, um, there are material journal entries during the audit, as well as we prepare with the city the schedule of expenditures of federal and state awards. So like I said, this is not uncommon, and we work very closely with Caitlin and her team to get these numbers accurate. The last pieces of this report are some required communications we have to have as your auditors. So we have to communicate if there are any changes in accounting policies, um, any estimates included in the financial statements, if there were any disagreements with management, which happy to report there were none, and just an overall, you know, customary and usual items in this section. So nothing to call your attention to necessarily. The last piece of this is looking forward. So there's some new accounting standards on the horizon that um, we work closely with Caitlin and her team to make sure that they get accounted for appropriately, as well as we want to reach out to you, uh, the council, to say audit isn't just a one time of year thing. So if anything were to come up during the year, we're always available to yeah, have sure. discussions. One of the last reports that we issue is called the single audit, and this is the compliance over the federal and state awards. We were able to issue unmodified opinions for this report. Um, there are five total programs that we tested for compliance in 2023, four being federal and one being state with the transit operating aids. Um, there were five financial statement findings, which those all correlate to those material weaknesses in the financial statement audit reporting and insights document. So if you have a material weakness, it translates into the single audit. There's one program specific finding, and this was on the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds, and this is a carryover reporting finding. So this will be gone in 2024 as those funds get used up. So overall, very clean bill of health for the single audit. When we shift over to the financial information, uh, the general fund is the main operating fund of the city. So if you were to look at the budget to actual schedule on page eight of your financial statements or page two in your handout, I have it broken out. The city budgeted to use about 7.7 .7 million of fund balance in the general fund when actually used about $1.2 million. So this was a favorable position of about $6.4 million compared to budget. Now, both the revenues and expenditures had positive variances to the budget, mostly due to increased ambulance fees. Um, interest rates were on the rise, so interest income increased, as well as decrease in public works and public safety. On page three of the handout is a very high level summary of all of the funds, the governmental funds of the city. So we talked briefly about the general fund. The general fund decreased fund balance of about $1.2 million during 2023. And at the end of the year, there was $22.8 million in fund balance. Now this is broken up into a couple different categories. It's not all available to spend. There's about $144,000 in inventory, so that's considered non-spendable. Um, there's $350,000 committed for development. There's about 1.7 million that is earmarked for the, fis the next fiscal year's budget, which left about $20.6 million of unassigned fund balance. So if we put this in perspective, this is about 46% of the 2024 budgeted expenditures and the city has a policy to have at least 25%. So very strong 
position there in the general fund to meet any needs that are needed. I'm not gonna go through in detail all of the other funds that are included here, but um, I will call your attention to, there's one column labeled non-major governmental funds. And this is a combination of 13 of the smaller special revenue funds and then the cemetery permanent fund. So these are found on pages 67 to 70 of your financial statements, but in total, those funds increase fund balance by about $1.7 million. Ending fund balance for all of those funds combined is about 5 million. On the next page is a summary of the enterprise or business type funds of the city. So this is your sewer utility, water utility, transit, parking, boat, and recycling, as well as the internal service funds, which are the motor vehicle, data processing, health insurance, workers' comp, and general liability. So the sewer utility increased their net position in 2023 of about $3 million, up to about $22.2 million. Once again, all of this is not available net position to spend, there's a calculation that is called net invested in capital assets, which is basically the capital assets that you have net of the related debt. So there's about 6.7 million there, about $4.9 million of restricted fund balance, and about 10.5 million of unrestricted fund balance in the sewer utility. When we look at the water utility, net position increase of about $5.9 million up to $63.3 million. At the end of the day, the unrestricted portion of the water utility is about $4.8 million. And then looking at the transit, transit net position decreased by about $373,000, down to $10 million. Of this, the unrestricted portion is about $3.2 million. The final page of the handout that I have is a summary of the long-term obligations of the city. So if you wanted to look at detailed information about this, I'd point you to pages 38 to 43 in the financial statements. But we have the governmental activities broken out from the business type activities. And if we look down this list, the biggest bucket is the general obligation bonds and notes in both the governmental and business type. There's also other liabilities including leases, subscriptions, some mortgage notes. Both of these categories increased from prior year based on the, the needs of the city during the year, but the city has a debt limit of about $210 million when we look in total of what can be borrowed. And so you, there's a capacity to borrow more if need be. It's a fairly significant number that you have left to borrow, but it is there. I have my contact information as well as Wendy Unger, who is the principal on this enga engagement. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions now or else you could contact me or Wendy at those um, contact information. Sounds good, thanks Michelle. Any questions from Alders? Alder Ballinger. Thank you for this, this is very helpful. Um, I met with Caitlin before this meeting going over some uh, budgetary questions and these are some of the questions that um, I hadn't gotten a chance to get to that um, are presented, so I appreciate that, so thank you. My question is the unmodified opinion. How often is that given? Is that fairly frequently or is it, is it not as regular or you know what, if you could just give me some kind of sense of, of what kind of opinion that is. Yep, so an unmodified opinion is what you want from your auditors. We do not issue a lot of non-unmodified opinions because we typically will work with you to get your financial statements where you need to be, whether it's a lot of journal entries and a lot of work to get there. We could issue a qualified opinion or a modified opinion if we couldn't get on the same page as say the city and say we don't agree with your numbers. But that's not the goal of anyone's audit. So I would say an unmodified opinion is 98% of the time what you will get or what anyone would get. And that's what you want. Thank you. And I'd just like to call out the city administrator and Caitlin for doing a good job on this. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. All right. Thank you, Alder Bellinger. Anyone else wishing to speak? All right. Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk, anyone for public forum this evening? Um, just one person, Jim Van Akron. All 
right? Then Jim, you've got five minutes, but if you can please state your name, address, and the items you'd wish to address. My name is uh, Jim Van Akron. I live at 432 Lincoln Avenue. I'm here to comment on items 19, 25, 40, and 41 on your agenda and how they relate to sustainability. Uh, but first I want to remind you what the City Council has committed to regarding uh, sustainability. On March 21st of 2022, the Council reorganized and reestablished the S Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. It was the unanimous decision of all the older persons present, including four who remain on the Council. The task force members, all citizens, were approved by the Common Council and summoned by the Mayor in November of 2022. Each Common Council since has reapproved the composition of the Council. I agreed to serve on the task force as the resolution passed in March 2022 indicated the Council believed that increased citizen participation benefits the whole community by creating a positive environment and I emphasize this, of shared responsibility and collaboration. The council further stated that climate change impacts our city and the city needs to do its part to combat climate change. And it also stated it's in the public interest that sustainability guides city's policy now and in the future. When you look at items 19, 25, and 40, it is clear the recommendations to the council by the city administration do not embrace what the council said it believes. I've sent you all an email outlining what is lacking in these requests. To highlight, the city continues to focus on the purchase of gasoline or petroleum diesel vehicles, but for the one hybrid squad car requested by the police department. There are more sustainable options available to the city as I indicated in my email to you. The 2025-2029 capital improvement plan is a 20th 20th century plan does, that does not meet our 21st century sustainability needs. One item in the plan, the re-roofing of the Municipal Service Building in 2025 illustrates this. Previous year's capital improvement plans had a solar array that was set to be installed in 2025, which makes sense once the new roof is in place. The city administrator has now removed it from the plan. If the solar array is installed, 30% of this project would be reimbursed by the federal government and the electrical cost savings would pay for the project in about 10 years, with another 10 to 15 years of cost-free electricity to, for the city. Solar is the 21st century. Relying on the Edgewater coal-fired power plant is the 20th century. Item 41 illustrates one of the few collaborative efforts by the city administration with the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. The task force assisted the city forester in writing the grant that was awarded to the city in the amount of $175,000. Tim Bull, the city forester, told me the city probably would not have received the grant but for the citizens' participation of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force and the Roots Program. In addition, the task force provided information which highlighted our air quality problems in Sheboygan. The grant needed to address environmentally disadvantaged areas of the city, so this information was helpful in getting the grant. With the exception of Tim Bull, the city administration does not seem to want to engage with the task force. If you as a council truly believe in sustainability and the statements made informing the task force, you will question the administration on its recommendations and ask it to come back with more sustainable recommendations after consulting with the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. This can only come from you, the council. The task force efforts to be involved almost always go unanswered. As long as I have a few more moments, I want to direct your attention to item 40 on your agenda, the marina development. There's a lot of sustainability issues with this plan, but I want to highlight one, the ice ribbon, which isn't really ice. The reason we can't have ice in Sheboygan is because our average winter temperature for an ice skating rink with real ice is our average winter temperature has increased by five degrees in the last 50 years. Climate change due to greenhouse gases is responsible for this. It is subtle. You may not have noticed it. 
The irony is we are proposing a plastic ice skating ribbon. The production of plastic, which is a petroleum-based product, produces more greenhouse gases. I hope you see this irony and do the right thing. Thank you. All right. Just a few announcements then on my end. Um, I know the city clerk and her team have been hard at work uh, getting ready for the upcoming November election. Uh, and just a reminder to folks that uh, in-person early voting starts tomorrow, uh, generally during normal visit out, generally during, during normal business hours and check out the city's website for more information on early voting and the hours uh, for the next couple of days. Planning and development will also be holding their uh, landlord training program on November 7th. Uh, folks are interested, please contact uh, city planning uh, by this Friday to get your name on the list as well. Uh, just an item of note that will be on our agenda today is the Marina Plan, and I know uh, the Marina Plan has gotten a lot of attention, a lot of citizen participation over the last few months, and I appreciate uh, all the city staff that have worked diligently on this, uh, as well as the input from the community members, as well as uh, city council members as well. Uh, just to reiterate that this is just a high-level plan. Uh, this plan uh, that will be discussed uh, later today does not appropriate or guarantee uh, any spending of city dollars on any of the projects uh, that are proposed in this plan as well. The city's working diligently uh, with many other partners as well to look at grants and other fu uh, funding opportunities to help support uh, the future of our waterfront as well. So just uh, a note on that one as well. Otherwise, that concludes my comments for this evening. We'll jump into the consent agenda. Alder Decker, items 9 through 21. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on consent agenda? Alder Heideman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, item number 18, I request that uh, I'd like to make a motion to send that back to committee. Second. All right, there's been a motion second to send item 18 back to the Licensing, Hearing, and Public Safety Committee. Any further discussion? Okay, again, we, we had some discussion on at the committee meeting on it. We want to look at that ordinance again. Uh, and again, I don't think it's right to deny a license that uh, basically uh, the description within the ordinance, there might have to be a change or something like that in there, and then this gentleman would be able to get that license. But I just would like to take another look at it. Thank you. Thanks, Alder Heidemann. Alder Peterson? I'll just echo uh, uh, Alder Heidemann here. I, I'm also on that committee and, and aware of this situation. And uh, I think that, you know, potentially we could maybe do something with our ordinance to make this a, f a feasible option for Mr. Menser. Thank you. Seeing no more discussion, all those in favor of sending item 18 back to committee, state aye. Aye. Any objections? All right, we're back at the main consent agenda. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a change to item uh, 14, uh, make, a, make an amendment to it. All right, um, please state your motion. Um, I move to uh, change the dance floor fee from $150 to $75. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item or this amendment? Um, I guess I just make the reason. I guess it was just a, a, a it was a clerical error that it was put in there at that point. That's why it's being changed. Thank you. Um, any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing no further discussion on the amendment, all those in favor of accepting the amendment, state aye. Aye. Any opposition? All right. The amendment is approved. Now we'll go back to item 14, or excuse me, we'll go back to the consent agenda with the items amended. Any further discussion on any of the consent agenda items? Seeing none, all those in, this is a roll call vote. Thank you. Alder Feldy. Is she on Scott? Seven eyes. All right, that's approved. All right, uh, reports of officers item 22 through 26 will be referred to their respective committee. Resolutions items 27 through 34 will be sent to their respective committees. All right, now reports of committees. Okay, bear with us here. All right, item 35, RC number 124. 
2425 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 832425 by Alder Persons Mitchell Umbrella, authorizing a contract between the City of Sheboygan and Tyler Technologies for purchase and implementation of enterprise permitting and licensing authorization on amendment to the 2024 budget. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Bellinger. Could I get an explanation of exactly um, how this impacts us and, and what departments are gonna be using it. And it seems like an, an expensive software program. I think it's like 270 some thousand, I believe. And I think if you could tell me what the ongoing license, the annual fee would be to this as well. So I just, I don't oppose it. I just want to have a clarification for myself and for the public so we can understand this better. So thank you. Finance Director. Sure, thank you. Um, first, I would like to start with the funding question. So the uh, total amount is the 269,000, which is the upfront cost. It includes $190,000 of implementation cost. So moving forward, it's about $78,000 a year. Several departments are going to be using this software, including uh, parks for um, potential special event permits, but also the planning division um, and building inspections are gonna use it significantly. And I will defer to Diane in a moment to explain the use for there, but also DPW um, for certain permits through the engineering office are going to be using this software as well. Thank you. Diane? Yeah, to, so to add on to um, to Caitlin's comments, our department will be heavy users of this. Right now, a lot of our processes are very manual. And so, um, for instance, right now, every permit is keyed in by staff. So this will interface with our website where people can apply for a permit online and so staff won't have to rekey that. Currently, we have no ability to take any applications other than basically at our window. It will also allow us to process electronic credit card payments, which we cannot do right now. And then there'll be a tremendous amount of efficiencies in the field for our inspectors. They'll be able to, for instance, take a picture of a violation or of a issue at question and immediately will be uploaded into the system. Currently, staff have to take a picture, download it to their computer, upload it to Munis. So it's, it, it, will t it will help us tremendously in efficiencies. And finally, I will say one of the things that we really struggle with is, is um, our enforcement process and staying on top of all of that. So this system will automate that whole enforcement process. So at any given time, we'll know as well as the client or customer where things are at with any permit. Thank you for that. I appreciate the explanation. Any other discussion on this item? All right, seeing no more, this is a roll call vote. Seven eyes. All right, that's approved. Item 36, RC number 125-2425 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 892425 by older persons Mitchell and Prella, adopting certain changes to the city's medical benefit plan and dental benefit plan effective for calendar year 2025 coverage and establish the monthly premium rates effective January 2025 coverage. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Seven eyes. That's approved. R37, RC number 1262425 by Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution 912425 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Prella, authorizing an amendment of the 2024 budget reflecting a table of operation changes for the Police Department and Information Technology Department. Elder Mitchell. Move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Seven eyes. All right. 
that's approved. Next, RC number 127, 24, 25 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution 97, 24, 25 by Elder Persons Mitchell Umbrella, authorizing into pre-development agreement with three Amigos apartments. Alder Mitchell. Move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you. This is a roll call vote. Alder Feldy. Try it again. Alder Feldy. Seven eyes. That's approved. 39, RC number 129 24, 25 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 80 24, 25 by Elder Persons Mitchell Umbrella, approving the financial policy handbook. Alder Mitchell. And can I move to receive the RC and adapt the resolution? Second. Thank you. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Mitchell. I would move to amend Exhibit A within the Purchasing and Contracts Guide as follows. Add 10 uh, liquor liability if the services rendered involve providing alcohol for consumption by others liquor liability insurance must be carried with a limit of one million dollars per occurrence moved and seconded any discussion on the amendment all those in favor of accepting the amendment state aye aye, aye. any objections all right back to the main motion as amended any further discussion on this item Seeing no more discussion, uh, all those in favor of approving the item as amended, this will be a roll call vote. Try again. Yeah. Alder Feldy. Oh, she just got wrong. Seven eyes. That's approved. Item 40, RC number one. 30, 24, 25 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 95, 24, 25 by Elders Decker and Ramey, adopting a Sheboygan waterfront and marina plan. Holder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on this item. Alder Decker. Uh, I just want to say, as, as, as has been stated before, th this is, you know, we're not spending $77 million. This is, uh, this is, we're, we're, this is a concept of a plan this is a we need we need to, to put this out there so that we can apply for grants to, to move forward um, I look forward to if you look at the one of the next things that comes up is a, is a uh, purchaser where we're looking at uh, a design for a bridge that was a concept too and we had to put that concept in there in order to be able to apply for grants to get it now that one took quite a few years. Hopefully some of these things don't take quite as long as what that did, but that's how this is gonna work. We're gonna move some of the stuff forward slowly. This is gonna, all, all these things are gonna be vetted. There's certain things that are on this uh, plan that are gonna absolutely be changed. I can tell you for a fact that we are not going to be, at least as, if, if, if I have any say on it, we are not gonna be adopting floating buildings uh, for, the, uh, for the marina, um, because I think that's, uh, totally inappropriate, but this is, I, uh, I think this is a, a good idea. That it's a good start, and we need to do something to get this to get this rolling, and this is how we get this, we, we apply for this funding. Thanks, Alder Decker. Any other comments on this item? Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I, I concur wholeheartedly on the floating buildings. <laughs> 77 million is obviously a absolute non-starter for this project. I, there were two main problems that caused us to start this conversation in the first place. The marina not bringing in enough revenue each year that would to cover its operations and its debt payments. So we were already upside down in marina operations. Uh, and then the fact that right now it is in a state where the existing infrastructure is in need of some pretty serious repairs. Once that conversation started, because the initial price tag on those repairs was rather eye-opening, I think it was somewhere around 13 million. 
we also identified some opportunities so we could utilize that space better, uh, make the most of it, and also increase the opportunities for members of the community who are not voters to enjoy the area. I understand the plan as a concept, but looking at it, it seems those interesting opportunities were very much what was focused on and there was almost no focus on the original plans that we had, which is the fact that financially something needs to be done to keep the marina operating. I know we have to put a plan forward. I question what the value of a plan that we all can sit up here and admit is never going to happen, is going to be. It seems to me that the plan that we put forward should actually be the guide for the decisions that we are making in the future. All for having some ambitious items in that plan, but it at least needs to have a relationship with reality. I will not be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Mitchell. Alder Heideman. Yes, again, the, we come back to the question of whether or not we're gonna have marina, how much money we're gonna spend on a marina. Uh, I, I compliment the, uh, the organization that came back and gave us this report. But again, uh, $77 million is a non-starter. We have to determine as a council and a city what we want down there and how much we want to spend on the marina itself because that was the, that was the initial, uh, uh, I guess, reason we went into this. And all of a sudden we said, well, we need to get a plan. Well, we got a plan. We got a plan back. Quite honestly, though it really looks nice, it's way, way too expensive. And, and until we decide as a community and, and a council that we want a marina that's a functional marina for our city and we need to know how much money we want to spend on it, I think that's what we need to start and that's where we need to get back to. Thanks, Alder Hedeman. Any further comments on this item? Alder Mitchell? One quick follow-up. I forgot the question I was going to ask. Was there a survey for residents that closed just last week for this? City Administrator? Yes, the... Uh, the survey was specifically just getting feedback on the plan, the final plan that was presented. Um, the, so this plan <clears throat> was basically a master plan of the river or the lakefront area kind of into the river. Um, this is essentially providing council with how the public would like to use that. That's why we had a public session instead of us proposing things. This This is a plan that comes out of how the public would like to use that area. Um, so ultimately, <clears throat> we'll look at individual pieces of this as we move forward, and then I'll, we'll look at um, bringing proposals that are kind of using this as the basis of what gets presented, and then ultimately council will make a decision on what they actually want to move forward with as opposed to um, kind of what's in this master plan now. But we do <clears throat> ultimately need a master plan of con conceptually how we want the riverfront to look or the lakefront to look because without that we won't be able to go after state funding or uh, federal grants or even private grants I understand that it just would very much be my preference that that master plan is closer to what we envision it all looking like in let's say 10 years Alter Decker already took floating buildings away from me, so I can't now say it and repeat it, but that was one item that stuck out to me. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Mitchell. Anyone else? Seeing none, this will be a roll call vote. Alder Feldy? Five eyes, two no's. All right, that's approved. Next item 41, RC number 1352425 by Public Works Committee. To whom was referred direct referral um, resolution number 1022425 by Elders Decker and Ramey, authorizing the pur purchasing agent to issue purchase orders for three nurseries for the purchase of tree street trees for the 2025 street tree planting program for the city of Sheboygan. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and second. Discussion on this item. 
Elder Bellinger. Thank you. I would just like to make a comment. Um, in my um, district, uh, Tim Bull and his crew uh, were putting in trees last week. And to see the process, it was uh, quite amazing and quite efficient how quickly they were able to plant all these trees. I mean, it, it seemed like there were, you know, in the hundreds of trees that they planted on the north side. And it was fantastic to see and how quickly they got it done and um, how efficient it was. So I would just like to, uh, you know, give them kudos for doing a great job. And I think this is a great program. And uh, just to retrip retain our status as being a tree city. I think it's fantastic. Thanks, Elder Bellinger. Other comments? Seeing none, this will be a roll call vote. Seven eyes. That's approved. 42, RC number 134-2425 by Public Works Committee to whom was referred direct referral 101-2425 by Elders Decker and Ramey authorizing the purchase agent to issue a purchase order for the abatement of asbestos from the accessory structure of the property located at 1211 North 23rd Street to proceed demolition of the structure. Holder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and, re and adopt the resolution. Moved and seconded. Discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Seven eyes. That's approved. Next item 43, RC number 136 2425 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution 12425 by Elders Decker and Ramey, authorizing the appropriate city officials to amend. The agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Gooling Waste Demolition LLC for the demolition of the structures located at 1211 North 23rd Street. Holder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and second. Discussion on this item. Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Seven eyes. That's approved. Next item 44, RC number 137-2425 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 99-2425 by Elder Persons Decker and Ramey authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with HDR Engineering for the design and movable pedestrian bridge connecting the South Pier Promenade with the area of the Riverfront Drive in Virginia Avenue. Elder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Moved and seconded. Discussion on this item? Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. Obviously, I have to once again uh, weigh in on the bridge. I, we were told when this conversation picked back up again last year that there would be opportunities for council to review where the project is and what we anticipate it looking like as we continue into the future uh, based on how it's gone so far and that any of those opportunities would serve as checks where council can decide to ultimately end the project if it no longer seems like the cost or the scope of it are consistent with what we were envisioning. In my opinion, this being the first real one of those checks, it is also effectively the last one. This is $1.5 million, give or take, plus uh, reimbursable expenses. I didn't see an estimate for that. I may have missed it. And about two years of engineering work. And I do not see any council that after two years of engineering and over a million and a half dollars spent, that is going to pull the plug on it at that point. It would be my strong preference that we, if not move on from the idea of the project, at least pause to consider for another year or two so that we can see how that TID actually grows, what type of revenues it has, to pay back this debt. We have other projects in that same debt as well. This one seems a bit superfluous on top of them at this time. Thank you. Thanks, Alder Mitchell, Alder, or excuse me, Administrator Bradley. Sorry. Um, I can provide some background on the grant side of it. 
So the grant is a federal raise grant that has to be expended by 2028. So we're, this keeps us on track for expending that. Um, <clears throat> this contract is for design and construction. So a portion of that contract would not necessarily be, is that correct, Kevin? Design and construction services for the engineer, just design. This is just design. So this is just design. Um, so that's taking it all the way through full design. So as we're kind of working through with the fire station, we've got a couple different stages of design. So this would be taking it all the way through bid documents. So this is, bid documents are the most expensive port, part of design. So um, you would theoretically have the ability to stop the project in schematic if you felt that the conceptual designs were too expensive or not something that was fitting for the city. Um, and then we do have the city's match is in TID 21. Um, realistically, we'd be looking at probably 27, 28, 29 before we'd really be looking at significant um, taking on of debt, things like that. So. Um, we're pretty confident with the projects that we have moving forward that they will be well underway um, and a substantial portion of the ones that we're approving now or in the next month or two will be completed by that. So we're pretty comfortable moving forward and making a recommendation to move forward um, at this point. Thanks, Thanks. Administrator. Elder Bellinger. Thank you. I was uh, going to ask the city administrator to go through the funding mechanism for this, um, but um, he did that. So thank you for that. I am share some of the concerns uh, that have already been expressed as far as um, the cost on, on this and um, the, the need for something like this. However, I'm intrigued by it as well. And uh, what intrigues me is what we come up with for the marina plan. And again, I have some concerns with, with that too, with the dollar amount on that and, and what's eventually gonna come to fruition with that. But if we plan right and we do develop that, the marina, the way it should be done, and if we have um, a, an exciting opportunity on the armory site, um, I just think that whole area can really be a boon for the city. and. Um, I, I think, you know, it would be kind of a, a unique attraction and we are kind of a tourist destination um, with, with everything that we have going on here. So I think it would be very unique. And uh, so I'm, um, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're gonna have something that is going to, you know, work out and, and be within budget. Um, so I'm going to, at this point, support it. Thank you, Alder Bellinger. Alder Decker. Yes, I, I concur with all the realms around on a lot of those items. I mean, um, what I uh, I feel we we, we uh, re all received letters from uh, many of the businesses along the both sides of the uh, river. Uh, all of them are in favor of this. They all would like to see this happen. This is you know this would be a boon to them. This is to help them thrive. Also, we want to keep them thriving, and this also will I believe help some of the empty vacant lots that are along the river to become more uh, more attractive to uh, um, outside places. So I think this is going to be a, a win for us, and I think that this is going to help spur, like I said, the development of the Armoria property and some of the others. So thank you. Thanks, Alder Decker. Alder Lefebvre. Yes, yeah, so well, I got a question. <clears throat> I'm basically pretty much uh, liking the idea of that, of that walkway, but have we had contact with the charter fishing captains and the charter fishing businesses that are in that area? Uh, do they have any concerns about obstruction of their uh, trafficking in and out to their moorings? Can somebody answer that question? Yeah, for I, I, I guess <laughs> I'll take that one. Um, generally, the answer is yes. Um, we do have a lot of uh, charter fishermen uh, in the marina uh, as well as in the riverfront. Have we talked to all of them? No, have we talked to some of them? Yes, um, I think their general feedback is just please keep us in the loop as we move forward um, with uh, the project as well. And we plan on doing okay. that. That answers my question, thank you. Yep. Alder Peterson. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor. I, uh, I echo what uh, uh, Alder Bellinger has said. Um, 
when I thought about this initially, I, uh, to be honest, I, I wasn't in favor of, of this bridge and I looked at it from the standpoint of the boaters. And um, this, this uh, contract though does have uh, different potential uh, bridge designs that potentially would uh, at least work with the boaters. Some of them uh, are hot, potentially high enough that the boats could still uh, get through un underneath the bridge. One question I had uh, for the uh, city administrator was, I, I'm, my assume, I'm assuming this grant is approximately $5 million. I don't know exactly the amount of the grant. That's question number one. And then the second part is, is if we start this process and we're going down to uh, spending $1.4 million uh, for these plans, if this does not come to fruition, that money then is lost then I'm assuming and the money that we've expended up to that point comes from the city then it doesn't, it's not paid for by the grant. City Administrator? Yes. Uh, that would be correct. If we expended the funds and then didn't move forward with the project, um, ultimately we would not get reimbursed um, on the federal grant. The federal grant is 5.3 million. Um, to be expended by 2028. So as we, I explained earlier, um, we could stop at different phases of design. So as you pointed out, there's the potential that there might be multiple options that are um, conceptually designed and then ultimately vetted through the public. So kind of how we've handled the D-Land Park and Fulton Park where we bring the public in and get their input um, to try to bet best uh, identify a project that um, the public would like to see most and bring that back for further consideration by council. Um, once that is picked, you know, they're moving forward is kind of the most expensive part and that's where you're getting into um, specific design specs where they're basically spilling out every intricate piece of the entire project from building it to constructing it. You have a follow up? Yep. So, um, yeah, I will say I'm in favor of this. I think, uh, you know, we owe it to the city at least to look at these plans and see if there's something that's viable that the city likes. Uh, this has been in the books for, I think, up to maybe 20 years. It's been here for a long time. I know at least uh, since the South Pier has been kind of under development and this was something that they've already, uh, they wanted back at that point in time. So I, I feel like it's worth supporting. Uh, with the caveat that uh, hopefully we can come up with a design uh, plan that works for all people, including the boaters. Thanks, Alder Peterson. All right, any final thoughts? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Six eyes, one no. That's approved. Items 45 through 49 will be referred to their respective committees. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, state aye. 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 All right, 653, we're adjourned.